you know, I, I, I'm the, 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 the Kairos Black Exercise Global and Newcomer Coordinator, and that's how I relate to, it, to you know, to Kairos. Um, but prior to that, I came in, in, in the mid 80s as a refugee um, from, from Cuscatlan, from El Salvador. Uh, when you when you are forced to you know leave your land for whatever reason and, and I put an emphasis on forced you know to leave your land um, uh, from that moment on you become you know a refugee right and uh, uh, and that's you know how I came to to, to Canada and then and from that moment on I've been working with newcomer communities from from many different uh, parts of the world uh, but I also became uh, more aware of my own roots once I was here in Canada yeah. and, I, and I was able to witness the first uh, Mayan so ceremony great. here in Toronto. And I thought it took, you know, um, for me to, to become a refugee and to come to Toronto to actually participate in my very first in, uh, Mayan ceremony when there were, uh, there are Mayan communities just, you know, maybe an hour from, from where I was born not even not even a hundred kilometers away from where I was born. But in my whole life, that uh, loss of culture, that loss of tradition, that loss of land, loss of language, uh, which indigenous peoples uh, from around the world uh, continue to, to experience around these days is, is pretty much part of that journey uh, as, as a refugee immigrant, you know, in, in this part. Um, I always often said to people that I don't think, um, you know, uh, this is a work that you do uh, only uh, one day or two days or a year or two years. This is a lifelong commi commitment and this is probably going to go even beyond our lifetime. Uh, but I'm just so glad and, and thank you so much to each and every one of you for, for taking the time to connect with us and I'm looking forward to to more conversations like this. I'm gonna leave it there and I'm going to give the uh, introduce to, to, to Connie, who is the other kind of staff who is also uh, uh, participating in this Indigenous and Newcomer Friendships dialogues. So, Connie. Thank you very much, Alfredo. Um, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat at maraming salamat sa pagdalo sa webinar na to. Um, I'm speaking in Filipino or in Tagalog because that's where I'm originally from. Um, I was just saying thank you very much and welcome to the webinar. Um, as, as a newcomer, um, well, first of all, uh, uh, just following, you know, Alfredo's introduction, uh, my being here in Canada is, is also forced. Um, I, I left the country with my family because of political persecution, and this was during the Marcos time. Um, when I arrived in late 1989 uh, and I attended the um, International Human Rights uh, Training Program at University of Ottawa, that was also the height of the OCA crisis. And, and you know, uh, hearing all the news and listening to uh, Indigenous peoples who are speaking, who are speaking to us and giving us, you know, an orientation of the history of, you know, colonialism in Canada and how it impacted them. It transported me to where I came from when, you know, we're, we're also victims of colonization, colonialization, uh, how, you know, the colonizers imposed their culture to, to my four, my great grandfathers and and militarization um, happened and, you know, being prevented from having to speak in your language and being, you know, seen as um, barbarians or uneducated, illiterate, and so forth. So when I was, when we were, you know, at that training in Ottawa, it just clicked on me. This is where I, you know, left the country because of the the military attack on indigenous communities, on poor communities, on people who are asserting their rights to land, uh, asserting their rights to, you know, to access resources and so forth. So I was telling my, my classmates at the training, I said, we are, human, we are human rights workers. What are we doing? 
and what should we do? Like, you know, there is a community being, you know, going to be attacked. Military forces are going to be sent. Are we just sitting here and contented in learning, you know, the international human rights conventions and so forth? So to make the story short, um, we organized a rally. We walked from University of Ottawa to the parliament and told the government that sending the military is not the right answer. It's really looking at the root cause of the problem and responding and addressing that, you know, the root cause of, you know, uh, the conflict. And so that was my very first introduction to indigenous uh, uh, communities and situation here in Canada that, you know, it showed me it's not different from where I came from. And, and from then on, I, there's this feeling, this passion of, building relationships with indigenous communities and sharing the same experiences of colonialization and, and finding common grounds in terms of, you know, how do we support and strengthen each other when, you know, if, when it's about fighting for land, fighting for water, fighting for, you know, a stewardship of, of, of the earth. Um, as, the migrant justice, well, before being the migrant justice coordinator at Kairos, I was coordinating also the ecological justice program. And with Ed, uh, we visited, I visited some indigenous communities. My first visit was um, the Lubicon Nation in, you know, uh, Peace River and, and so forth. And again, uh, it opened my eyes in terms of the real condition of indigenous communities. And later on, I, you know, I visited other communities and the passion to, to build relationships and, and stand side by side in, in asserting uh, the right to land, the right to water, the, the right to access, you know, uh, has been and continues to be, you know, uh, with me. <laughs> So just, just in terms of where I'm coming from, uh, that's where I come from. And I'm just so honored and grateful to be with Kairos and being able to do this work. Uh, not, not because I'm paid to do it, but it's part of, you know, the commitment, the passion and, and protecting, protecting people's rights. So again, thank you for being with us and I leave it to Krista. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Connie. Um, what a what a great segue, really. Uh, you know, it really is about our passion for social justice work. Um, that brings us to this gathering here online, but also, you know, in in trying times such as these, um, it's important to raise up social justice work like this when we can. That human rights piece is so big and will continue to be so big. We've all seen those headlines. Um, but in the spirit of, of uh, keeping things concise and on, on the agenda, um, I'm going to uh, welcome you once more to the Newcomer and Indigenous Friendship uh, web chat. And we have, um, we're going to offer it over to Alfredo to kind of give us a little bit more insight into uh, what is the Newcomer and Indigenous Friendship uh, Initiative? Thank you, Crystal. Um, I just wanted to add that um, the introduction, indeed, uh, it wasn't Spanish, that was actually Nahuatl, which is the language <clears throat> that I was told um, growing up, you know, that that was something from the past, that it was dead, that um, nobody else spoke the language, which, but it's not true. It's actually pretty much alive and our communities are there and the uh, elders are actually bringing back the language and the ceremonies. And that's where I was able to bring uh, instruments and all sorts of different things that they gave me. So as a reminder of where I come from, uh, and I wanted to, I just add a little bit, just to give you a little bit of background on why, you know, uh, why are we doing this? The Indigenous and, and, and Newcomer Friendship uh, is part of Kairos' effort to contribute to a just and inclusive Canada, building a just and inclusive Canada, 
uh, through dialogue, through reflection, through uh, getting together, bringing together indigenous and newcomers communities. Uh, but not just to engage in, in dialogue and reflection. We also want to get to want to get to know one another. We want to learn from each other. Uh, we want to have fun together. I remember one of the places where we did um, uh, one of the actually it was the very first Indigenous and Newcomer Friendship event gathering that we had in in, in Saint Mary's First Nation in uh, mm -hmm. just just you know what is also known as Fredericton, right? In, in uh, um, it, it, you know, we did talk about some of the issues affecting the indigenous uh, people in the region. Uh, and we did talk also about some of the issues affecting the newcomers that came to that uh, event. But above all, we have a lot of fun. We did have a lot of fun. You know, we ate together, we listened to music, we, we saw people dancing, uh, telling stories and so on. And to me, that was very important because we built those relationships by sharing our cultures. And, and, you know, I could tell you a lot of um, anecdotes from that one single event. But we are going, to, um, uh, we are going to, to hopefully have other opportunities to go into more details about, um, you know, the events. We did one in, in, in Fredericton, we did one in Winnipeg, we did one in North Bay, we did one in, in Edmonton. Um, and of course we did, uh, you know, uh, a lot of events here in, 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 in Toronto as well. Um, I also want to acknowledge at this point that, that you know, some of the re people who register to, to, I don't know if everybody's here, in fact, not everybody who registered is here, I, I know that for a fact, but in some of the registration, there were people from Newfoundland and there were people from BC, which is great because we could have, you know, representation from right across uh, Turtle Island. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to, to build these connections. Uh, we do have a history, you know, we do share a history of colonization, as Connie mentioned before. Uh, you know, many community, newcomer communities, in, uh, you know, here in, 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 in Turtle Island. Uh, when we arrived here, we learned about Canada as a state, and we learned everything about Canada in terms of the Canadian history of, uh, you, you name it, who was the first prime minister, who, what are the political parties of Canada, uh, and so on and so forth, which is important to, to learn. I, I'm not saying it's not important, uh, but what I'm saying is that equally, we should be learning also who were the first peoples of the land, who were here before everybody else came, and we don't learn that. Uh, it takes efforts like this, actually, to be able to connect with, 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 you know, with people and then learn. Uh, I think we want to see this uh, happening more of a, at an at a institutional uh, level. So, but that's again, you know, work for us. Uh, we won't, we're not going to solve everything in the first, uh, in one hour that we have. Um, uh, again, I just wanted to, to emphasize how important it is and hopefully we will be able to uh, meet again and get to know one another a little bit more for those of you who, who are on, on with us uh, through this web chat now. Uh, we would love to hear from you. There is a chat there that you can use, send us a questions if you have. Uh, in an ideal world, you know, our introduction will be very short and we will give you more space for you to, to actually speak. Uh, this is our first uh, session and so bear with us. But I want to encourage you to, to uh, put your hand up there if you know how to do it um, or just send us a, questions and, and a question and we'll try to uh, answer that. So um, let's try to have some fun. I'm going to pass it on to Connie now. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was just, I, I, I'm going to talk a little bit or briefly on, you know, why is it important now uh, to, to build and to have this friendship relationship between uh, indigenous communities, indigenous peoples and newcomers. And I would say it's not, it's not limited to that. It should be actually a tribe people relationship. So we're talking about settlers newcomers and indigenous communities, indigenous peoples. Um, at the first uh, friendship event that we did in, in, in Fredericton that Alfredo uh, mentioned, uh, we started with a panel, uh, you know, from, from a settler, from an indigenous, you know, from actually Mary Brooks was the one who spoke. Uh, 
and 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 also Roland uh, Moreno from uh, a Philippine a leader of the Philippine community there. And what was very um, profound and really uh, struck me was, you know, the sharing of 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 these three speakers, starting from, you know, uh, Roland, who said that, you know, when they arrived, they didn't know anything about the culture, the history of Canada, the situation of indigenous peoples and communities. And, and, and so, uh, since they're faced with the challenges of, of uh, integrating and economic needs and so forth, there is that vacuum where, you know, there, there was no efforts or they didn't know how to start the relationship. And, and uh, um, Mary uh, Brooks said that, you know, um, well, when people start to come, we welcome you, we welcome them, but they have to respect our culture our access to resources, our lands, our rivers, our waters. It's like, do not, you know, uh, do not come and take this away from us. Uh, so, so listening to that, that is the very important essence of what the relationship about, you know, uh, mutual respect. Recognizing that we all come from different backgrounds, we all come from different cultures, that no culture is, you know, super or above the other. And this is important, you know, in, 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 in building that relationship. And currently, why now? Why is it important now? We are facing, you know, this pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic is affecting all of us. But then we have to recognize that, you know, the, the degree of impact is different to different communities. And we can just imagine how it's like, you know, in an indigenous community where access to clean water is, you know, is not there, that many communities are still on, you know, uh, boil water advisory. When, when, Communities are, you know, facing the pandemic, but at the same time, defending their lands from the incursion of mining, you know, uh, mining projects or other mega projects. And, and I guess relationship, friend, friendship relationship that's built on mutual, you know, respect and mutual understanding and, and that can only, you know, that can only happen when we really learn and understand the culture or, you know, the needs and the impacts of, you know, uh, colonization. Uh, either we bring it or we were victims and we come and to the communities who are also uh, reeling from that experience. So I would say, and I really, you know, appreciate being part of this web chat. Because as, as, as a newcomer, I still, having been here for 30 years, I still consider myself a newcomer because there's so much to learn and, and, and so much relationships to, to, to build. So I'm, there's more to do. <laughs> and, and, I, and this is just the beginning and I hope, you know, others who are in, in the room as well, you know, can share their, experience, their experiences at some point during this uh, webinar or maybe next time. Thank you, Connie. Um, you know, I think it, it's, it is a new perspective to think about the challenge of newcomers having, you know, one, this obligation, this legal obligation to learn so much so quickly about your, the new home and then there's this whole other layer that's not necessarily evident or, you know, you hear about respecting indigenous um, peoples in different, you know, documents and things like that. But uh, one, one of the comments we've heard are, where are all the indigenous people? I hear about them, but I don't see them. And, you know, or they, they hear, you know, only kind of like these soundbite pieces on the news. So it's, it's really, you know, for this Earth Day, 
and like you said, with what we're dealing with um, as, a, as a globe, as a global pandemic, uh, this Earth Day is a very special one and it's unique in what it is that we're all uh, looking at. For myself as an Indigenous person, I didn't really learn much about my own family history or my own Indigenous identity until I was an adult. Um, because there was so many um, challenges that I had to overcome as a young person, whether it was homelessness, um, you know, or as a, a single parent trying to navigate housing insecurity, or things, you know, whatever obstacles those might have been, um, I wasn't able to really embrace my own identity. And even now, because I am a white-coated Indigenous person, uh, there's con there's always this um, importance to center my voice in a certain way because it is different of a person of color and how they would experience it. But at the same time, we, for Indigenous Canadians, uh, race shifting is a huge issue, where uh, you know it's it's kind of a newer internal, seemingly internal piece. But we're starting to understand more that that's why we have to talk about our lived experiences and that's why we have to talk about where we come from and where we've been as an indigenous person i knew nothing about the colony colonial history of other nations i remember i still remember the day that i put it together and i thought wow we're the first peoples here in on turtle island but there's a whole world out there and there are first peoples everywhere and I, it, it was a little embarrassing because it had never occurred to me. Uh, but then you start to see the bigger picture and how when we look at resource extraction, like with this Earth Day and with this pandemic, uh, you know, there's certain projects that are still going ahead or there's still man camps doing work or there's still construction being done uh, when those people should maybe be at home. But just like everyone else, we got to take care of our families, right? Um, when we look at those extract, extractive places and actions and things happening, we know that Indigenous bodies are the ones putting, you know, defense and protection out there with their bodies. So uh, I really appreciate what you had said about how important it is to come together and to talk about those commonalities, those issues that we share, whether it's access to water, uh, like we know the Navajo Nation right now, is really being crippled by the COVID virus. The majority of the community does not have uh, running water, running drinking wa drink drinkable water. My own community that's only 30 minutes away um, doesn't, like they have boil water advisories and they kind of come off and on. Uh, I have a cousin, my first cousin, and she supports herself by teaching about culture and she goes to very, remote northern communities to teach about singing and being proud of your identity and you know trying to kind of unpack some of that harm and she went to a community that is considered one of the communities who have had their drinking water issues resolved they've had the bans lifted and you know uh, without getting too deep into politics uh, a certain political party is very proud and saying we've fixed the water in this community and uh, right when all of this COVID virus was breaking, she fell ill with mercury and E. coli poisoning from drinking water at the hotel because she was told it was safe. And she's a single parent of three and she's, that's how she supports herself. Uh, so it's really before the virus had called uh, non-essential workers kind of home, uh, she was already physically crippled to the point where it's going to impact her for the rest of her life. Uh, not to mention the care that she's able to offer her children, one of whom is quite disabled. So, um, you know, this, this Earth Day, thinking about those commonalities like water and healthcare access and reading about migrant workers who are um, refusing to do their own groceries in town because why should they accept more risk? They're already coming in to a community with a lot of, of cases. So. Um, yeah, it's a lot to think about, but it is also uh, a real blessing to be able to come together and, and look at all of the faces that are here and invested in, in building friendships and, and understanding those commonalities. Um, 
it's it's wonderful to meet with everyone here and i'm just going to open up um the space a little bit for anyone who does want to share yeah it may seem strange to some of you but in fact i am a newcomer i came in uh, 1978 uh i was previously living in the States and before that I was, I was in England. And uh, when I came into the United Church, uh, I was appointed to two pastoral charges. Uh, they were both on the Bruce Peninsula. Uh, one was Lion's Head, uh, which was a thoroughly Anglo-Saxon uh, community. And the other was Cape Croker. Um, Maywash band there. And so I had this uh, experience more or less uh, uh, every, every Sunday of going from uh, one community into the other, uh, of uh, preparing a sermon which had to be uh, considerably uh, adjusted to, to both communities and, uh, and often ended up saying rather different things to both communities. And I, I can uh, remember the, the shock I had when um, I came um, as a person who, who knew very little about Canada um, to discover that there was a first world and there was a third world in Canada. Uh, and um, the uh, very de depressed and, if, if I may say, the kind of demoralized situation that was existing on, uh, on Cape Coca. Um, fortunately, I, I'd uh, been involved in uh, other uh, activities before coming. Uh, I was involved in the civil rights movement when uh, I was in the States previously and uh, also in the anti-apartheid uh, movement. Uh, when I was living in England, so um, I was I was aware of uh, of the disparities that there were between first world and uh, and third world uh, situations. But so that was uh, that was my uh, beginning here, and of course uh, that uh, and the other thing I noticed when I went to the uh, reserve, uh, which really kind of brought things home for me was that the only stone buildings on the reserve were the churches, were the school buildings, and the Indian agent's house. There wasn't an Indian agent, of course, at that time, but uh, the Indian agent's house was still there. So it was very clear that um, the um, majority society uh, decided that their, their presence was going to be a permanent, strong, controlling presence uh, amongst this people. So that's, that's what I'd like to contribute. Thank you so much, Mervyn. Um, it, that's a real visual image uh, to take in, absolutely. Um, when I think about my reserve right now, I think about the buildings and which ones are, are in what shape and <laughs> such. And uh, it does certainly give uh, a moment of pause to, to, to do that kind of thinking. Um, I remember uh, when I learned how the Indian agents were transitioned uh, into, or sorry, the residential school uh, staff and Indian agents where many of them were offered positions in child welfare. So it's, it's uh, part of that, that morph and that systemic piece that's, that's in Canada. Um, the, other, the other item that right, just come to my mind, which I, I would like to share with you again, has always uh, stayed with me. And it was the, my introduction to being uh, aware of uh, residential schools. Uh, I used to uh, go and, and visit uh, uh, an elderly lady by the name of Betty Badonaquit. And Betty spent uh, most of her time uh, making quill baskets. And she was a, she was a very uh, gentle and um, 
retiring kind of, of, of person. Uh, and anyway, uh, somehow the uh, subject of um, schooling came up and she mentioned about residential schools and I knew nothing about residential schools. Uh, but she was describing how that uh, she went there with her sister and uh, she said to me, even when we were in the playground, we could not speak to each other in Ojibwe. And then her, her face uh, really uh, hardened uh, with a lot of anger and a lot of distress. And she said to me, I don't know why they didn't cut out our tongue. And, and that, that statement really brought home to me and has always remained with me uh, as illustrating the kind of uh, uh, terrible oppression and brutality that went on in, in those places. I have, I have to correct myself. Like <laughs> for some moment there, I, I had, a, I had a, a blackout and I mixed up names. Um, we were at the St. Mary's community in Fredericton, and it was Alma Brooks, <laughs> who, who was the elder grandmother who, you know, who was at the panel. Uh, yeah. I think I mentioned Mary, and I mixed it up with the St. Mary's, yeah, so. But you got it, you got it. Back to me and said, Connie, you forget, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I remember, I remember that particular day when, when, um, Elder Alma Brooks, uh, you know, very clearly and looking straight forward to, to all the newcomers in the room, you know, she said, uh, I welcome you here on behalf of our community, you know, give you, you know, um, our welcome. You are welcome to be with us here. We, we want to get to know you. We want to know more about you. We want to learn from you. And she said, the only thing I asked you, she said, the only thing I ask you is that you will take care of the land, you will take care of the water, and you'll respect our people. And that was, that was very powerful. And, and you know, that was, it was great to see that sort of um, direct uh, dialogue and communication. You know, with, uh, when Crystal told you earlier today, right, that one of the things that we heard uh, in one of the, our many meetings, and, 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 you know, is that people will often, you know, who live in urban centers, you know, ask, where are the new, where are the, the, the indigenous people? Where are the natives? You know, we talk about them and we don't see them. And where, um, because there is that genuine interest from people, to, you know, want to know, uh, you know, something that has been denied to us. I mean, it, it's not only that we don't learn about others, but in many cases we don't learn about our, ourselves, right? Um, and so that's what has been denied to us. And I think that that's another commonality that we share that we want to explore that we want to remove those colonial barriers, right? Remove those colonial barriers and learn about our identity, our ancestral roots, our traditions, our cultures, our languages. And um, I don't buy into that, you know, that it's all in the past and it's dead and it's, it's not gonna come back. I said, mm, well, actually, every time I, I greet you in, in, in Nahuatl, I'm thinking, yeah, this is life. So that's what I was telling you earlier today, Yaktuno. That means good day, everyone. So I'm gonna leave it there. I, I don't know, I can't believe that you don't have any questions. <laughs> well, maybe we'll just give them some awesomeness and uh, something will come up from that. Um, I would love to share with you all um, a little bit about what's happening at Kairos, uh, particularly in relation to Earth Day. Uh, the ecological justice program that uh, Connie uh, used to work in is uh, now with Beth Lorimer and she uh, today is doing a, a launch of the For Love of Creation uh, campaign that is really meant to uh, raise up Earth Day and, and Kairos work simultaneously. So that's uh, one thing that if you are so inclined you can check out that's uh, fresh on the Kairos website. Um, also, we have uh, the Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women and Girls Info Hub on the Kairos website. And that has recently gone under, uh, undergone, sorry, a bit of a refreshment. So there's some newer links, some newer resources, 
um, I, I feel for myself as an Indigenous woman, it is very relevant on Earth Day uh, to touch on the calls to justice and how learning about connections to the land and Indigenous women's bodies will actually help strengthen our understanding of some of the needs around reconciliation and, and the, the remedial potential of the future. Uh, and then also very, very exciting is um, the Mare Hub, the Mother Earth Resource Extraction Information Hub, which is being spearheaded by Gabriela Jimenez, uh, who is also a Kairos uh, superstar. So uh, the Mare Hub is by Indigenous land defenders, uh, and it's meant to be a supportive resource for Indigenous land defenders, but also a great spot to get information and insights from the land defenders themselves. Last year, the hub launched, the Mare Hub launched, and it was a, a special spotlight on South American issues and Latin American issues, and um, which is, is great because it was, it's been a great learning tool for myself because I, I don't know as much about what's going on outside of Canada is what I've learned. Uh, but this year for 2020, the focus is on gathering those Canadian stories. So please have a, a check and visit with those different um, resources and, and uh, kind of offerings of the Kairos website. Uh, on the Kairos website, you can also find contact information for myself, for Alfredo, for Connie, uh, for the other awesome staff who are on this call, such as Connor, uh, Rick, and Isabel, and Cheryl, and Fahira, and Giselle. I see you all. And <laughs> uh, But for the program staff who are on this call, please absolutely do not hesitate to reach out to us. Our pictures are there. Uh, we're happy to engage with you and answer any questions or connect in any way. Um, and uh, we'd like to have more of these chats. Uh, we have scheduled uh, one for May 20th, another Wednesday, and a, uh, the final one for June 17th. But I say final as in this is a three-part test pilot. So <laughs> if you love us, we'll be back. Um, <laughs> um, so we will be sending out a bit of an, uh, a follow-up email using the email addresses you used to sign up to just kind of gauge uh, your feedback and what you thought of this little chat space. Uh, it was designed to be a very introductory kind of chat because we want you to know who we are to hold this space, uh, to have these conversations. And uh, so we hope to, to get your input and, and anything that maybe comes to you later uh, that, you know, was sparked by this, by this little mini gathering. Um, I want to honor uh, the elders in this space. I want to honor the youth I see that is in this space. And uh, once again, please, we have a few more minutes. I want to try and be concise because there is a follow-up uh, right after at four o'clock. I believe it's uh, Mining Watch is holding another chat space similar to this. Uh, so it's a busy day. Earth Day is lots of traffic with all of the, 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 the eco-justice warriors out there. It's, and it's a, what a great problem to have, right? Too many, too many communities to pick from in support of our Earth. Um, so yeah, once more, I'll just open it up quick. And if there's any, um, any, any calls to share, please, please feel free to do so now. I have, I have a question. Uh, I, I often encounter this question, and and honestly, um, not that I don't know how to respond, but I just want to, you know, to share this and. You don't have to respond to this now, but you know, for the next webinar, something to think of. <coughs> um, especially people from, you know, from uh, people of color, newcomers, or especially from, you know, from my community. Um, they're scared. They're wary. They're, you know, uh, uh, they don't know how to approach, you know the question of building relationship and being friendly with, you know, uh, indigenous people here. Like they, they, I guess, you know, they don't want to be seen as doing this as a token. They, 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 they want to, to build a real, you know, relationship, but 
they just don't know how. And sometimes I feel that too. Like I don't want to add harm to what is already there, but at the same time, not knowing, you know, uh, all the histories and, and so forth. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes not scared, but prevented from, you know, from taking the first step of, of, of doing it. And I can understand if, you know, people from my community, for example, would feel the same. So, so they always ask, ask that question, how do we do it? What, what can we do to, to, you know, to, to show that it's not tokenism, but it's rather wanting to build a sincere, respectful, and long-term, you know, friendship and relationship. That's a good question. Maybe we can we can write it down, and and um, maybe we'll do something in the next uh, on May the twentieth when we come back, and maybe we can ask some people to speak on that and to uh, offer some comments or insights into that. We just had a quick web question on the chat about uh, asking whether the next two uh, chat sessions would be on Indigenous and Newcomer Friendship and all three chats will have the same overarching kind of subject. Um, and also the, the question of what the other topics of the future chats might be. Uh, perhaps th there does need to be a more, uh, more of a Q&A you know, um, something like you're saying about what are some ways to build those those connections that are without causing harm. Uh, maybe that's something for the next chat is um, how do we build connection and really discuss tangible ways of doing that. What does that look like, especially in a time where we're so uh, grounded online. <laughs> From our houses. It's, I think uh, when I think about the newcomer Indigenous friendship uh, gatherings of the past and how they were in person, I can really easily see how that would be so powerful to come together and share a meal and to connect like we would with our, our neighbors and our family. Um, so we can't do that right now. But maybe, maybe there's uh, some brainstorming for myself and Connie and, and Alfredo that we can come with some really uh, great tips and tricks for our next get together. So thank you so much for those questions. And I'm just going to have to be a bit mindful of the time because of the uh, additional planned chats that are going on. And uh, once more, thanking you all so much for taking the time out of your day to join us to for picking us from three to four. Uh, it was very nice to, to see your faces and to hold this online space. Miigwech, uh, Tanzi, merci um, for joining us today. And I will just pass it really quickly uh, to Alfredo and Connie to say their thank yous and, and thank you. Adios. Thank you, Alfredo. Thank you, everyone. I cannot do that. I cannot sing. <laughs> so, but it's really, you know, um, a pleasure to have you join us, you know, at this uh, chat. And hopefully, we'll see you next time. And with, you know, bringing with you lots of questions and sharing. And yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Yeah.